Euston Station. So I'm quite pleased to have got here because uh, I've been known to get lost going from King's Cross to Euston, which isn't uh, isn't that far. Well, that's me out of the Britannia Hotel. Welcome to uh, Central Manchester. If you're thinking of staying in the uh, Britannia Hotel, my only advice would be don't. It's a horrible hotel. <laughs> it must have been lovely at one point, but uh, now it's just a horrible, smelly wallpaper peeling off cracked tiles, rubber sealant round the bath missing shadow that hasn't been painted for 15 years or so, full of rude staff. The problem is that um, they have a number of single rooms probably um, and obviously all I need is a single room and uh, they assume that if you're staying in a single room you're some sort of uh, migrant worker. So, <laughs> so you, get, you get a series of rooms which are really, you know, quite nice. And another, the, the double rooms, I suppose, and the suites are nice. And the single rooms are like, um, have never been touched. Because they assume that anything that's, uh, anything you get is better than what you're used to in Romania. Um, but no, wouldn't, I'm not going to go there again. So now it's uh, off to Nice. Now, Nice is here somewhere. I never get this right. Nice, have a, they have a funny way of doing things. They, um, one meeting, they're in one office block, and, and, and no, so I went to office block B, and they said, no, they're in office block A. And then the second uh, time, I went there and I, I went to office block A and they said, no, they're in office block B. So, <laughs> that was because they'd hired a, a room in office block B. And um, one of the consequences of that was that the, the, by, by virtue of hiring this office block B, they'd, um, the people who hire them the room, give away uh, free tea and coffee to absolutely everybody on the floor who's hired a room. So as a result, they had to tell us that we had free tea or coffee, which I think was quite painful for them because they don't uh, like giving away tea or coffee. They go to great plains to say that you don't get tea or coffee. And then, and then what do they do? They hire an office where you get free tea and coffee, dret. For the, for the observers. Uh, oh, I bloody hate this bed. Do you know what? I am about 10 yards away from where I need to be, but I can never remember how to get there. They have a funny thing. Nice, they tell you that they don't offer you refreshments. They order, they order piles of sandwiches for themselves. And they would rather that they sit there all afternoon and go off than take a spare plate in to the, uh, to the observers. So, ah, look, I've, I've lucked upon it. This is great. So, okay. I can't, I'm going to have to turn everything off when I go in. But do we go left or do we go right? Left or right? Come on, have a guess. And then I'll tell you later which one it was. Left or right? Left. Or right. Did you guess correctly? It was the left. They actually finished a bit early this time, which is good because my train leaves at uh, 4.35 and it's about 4.10. So I've got a pleasant walk 
to the station. St Manchester's sunny for the end of October. It's very good. It was um it was an interesting meeting as usual. It's always something weird happens, always something weird happens. I'm gonna turn the camera around so that uh, I don't get run over. But uh, I was in the uh, the uh, observers room and um, bumped into someone from Colgate who uh, told me that she'd been I gate crashed her launch of their electric toothbrush. Now oh, she'd obviously upset her greatly because she'd remembered this and was uh, have been waiting, stewing for months to tell me that I hadn't wasn't supposed to have been there. I went along as a favour to um, Derek Pearson, the editor of Dental Practice. He couldn't go, or Chris Ritchie couldn't go. And they asked me if I could go, because I was going to be in London that day, and I agreed. A little knowing that uh, if Colgate had known that I was going to be the stand-in, they were gonna, would have had a fit. And the reason she gave for that was that uh, we have different agendas. Which I'd, she didn't really elaborate on that. It was a bit odd. I spent... Uh, a bit of time trying to wonder what she meant by different agendas. So, bearing in mind my agenda is uh, oral health and uh, openness and transparency. And I think her agenda was to sell more toothpaste <laughs> or, or more electric toothbrushes. Although she said it wasn't an electric toothbrush launch, which is odd because they invited us along, gave us a big talk on this. Uh, it was the one I think where they have imported this, sorry I'm just trying not to get run over by a tram. They imported this, um, or they rebadged this Japanese uh, um, toothbrush, electric toothbrush that is supposed to go different speeds as you turn it left and right or up and down or whatever. And uh, they gave us a talk on it and everyone got a free toothbrush. And uh, and yet it wasn't a toothbrush launch apparently, so it was something else <laughs> to which <laughs> to which I wasn't supposed to have been invited. But I think, I mean, if I remember correctly, I wasn't that uh, complimentary about the brush, which may be what she meant. I think she may have meant that they only invited people who could be assumed to be complimentary about the brush and inviting along anyone who might not be complimentary was probably probably not uh, on their agenda and that's a different agenda she was talking about but anyway she's a rude woman she's got no manners and as my mother used to say if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all uh, so the actual meeting itself was uh, was actually it was a bit a bit more boring than normal because normally it's quite funny because they're floundering around and uh, they're in the middle really of the process at the moment in that uh, they are trying to fill the gap in the middle between deciding what they want to do and having a finished product and. Uh, I'm going to call this document the Shepherd Review because there's someone there called Linda Shepherd from uh, Nice, and she's sort of the boss. Although Alan Marion Davis is the chair, and to the extent that when the speakers are talking, if they um, if they get a question and they're in some doubt about what the reply should be, they tend to look at Linda and she sort of nods her head, in which case they say yes, <laughs> or she sort of shakes her head, in which case they say no. So I think, uh, and also the committee was having trouble uh, making sense of the Bayesian review of the dental research and um, they uh, you know, they weren't going anywhere with it, so 
shepherd has obviously she sat down and sort of notified it for them just gave them a quick uh, a spreadsheet uh, table 3.9 it's called we're not allowed to have it but basically it's a noddy a noddy's guide to uh, the Bayesian research to help them understand it because if they couldn't understand it they're never going to make any recommendations anyway they were asked to make some recommendations and uh, the recommendation that they suggested was um, fluoride application surprise surprise and uh, they they didn't even want to recommend that uh, even after uh, one Simon the other guy from nice said um, said uh, you know can we can we at least recommend this and then it got to the point where he said uh, can we recommend this is anybody against it and still they didn't want to do it and then he said well if we recommend this and some of you have got qualms about recommending it uh, can we you know you can we can deal with the qualms later let's just put it in for the time being and then we'll outline your object your objections later but still they wouldn't do it so poor old uh, Linda's got to go away now and she said she'd go and draw up a list of recommendations for them so not content with analyzing the research she's now going to write all the recommendations so I suppose that'll save time save her rewriting them <laughs> <laughs> later date uh, anyway here we are Manchester Piccadilly that didn't take too long did it oh right so I've got a three or four hour trip home now but uh, you know it's been it's been pretty good there was some well, I still think we actually took uh, the, the cause of dentistry and dental health further forward in the the visitors room than they did in the committee room and that's just with a you know 20 person committee what do you expect right I'm gonna sign off now I'll sign off from uh, Piccadilly go and see if my train's in I came up here and uh, I reserved a seat with a socket, you know, a power socket. And uh, some bugger sitting next to me asked if he could plug his iPod in. So I spent half the trip up here with a red hot plug and an iPad lead going across my lap. They drink power those iPods. I've got my noodle, my old noodle seven was fine. Worked on full power until about on the on the trip, and then uh, until about 11 o'clock that night. So they're obviously not as power hungry as the iPods. Where are we? Going to London. London, London, London. London, Euston. There we are. 16:35. Platform seven. Right, I need to find my ticket, so uh, I might talk to you on the way back or I might not. Anyway, let me know what you think of the coverage, if it's any uh, use to you. And of course, we'll be writing this up for Fusion Magazine anyway in December, so uh, get a Fusion Magazine if you want to uh, read in more detail. I'll talk to you later.